Measure and Mix. Today is Casey from Coffee with My Sunshine's Using Trash to Create Treasure Challenge that I was lucky enough to be able to co-host with her this month. If you participated in this challenge, make sure to add your video to the playlist, which is linked down below in the description box. If you're just here to watch, click on that playlist so that way you can watch everyone else's video who participated and get some inspiration for some trash to treasure. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I would love to have you stick around by hitting that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the notification bell so that way you don't miss out on any new DIYs. All right, let's get started. So for the first project, I'm gonna turn this table into my new coffee table. Now this table has been passed from my mom back to me and back to my mom and it was in her garage. It doesn't match any of our decor. It was either gonna end up in the trash or it was gonna end up at Goodwill and they were gonna charge an arm and a leg for it. So I thought it would be better to turn it into something that I can use. The first thing I did was, of course, remove the pedestal and legs. So I just unscrewed that from the top and set the top aside. Now, as you see here, I am trying to remove the legs. I thought they, they just slid out, which they do, but they were a little bit harder than I anticipated to come out. You can see here, I was pretty perplexed and I gave up. So <laughs> I just uh, went ahead and removed the top there and I had a what I thought was a great idea because I need to cut this pedestal down so that I can make it shorter. Um, and when I was gonna remove the legs, I was just gonna use my saw to cut it down, uh, my table saw. So instead, since I couldn't remove the legs, I got the um, sawzall out and decided to tape it off and cut it. Well, that didn't work out so well because it was very uneven and I needed an even top to put my table on. So I went back to the legs, got a mallet, and there you go. It came right off. So should have done that in the first place. Um, so I removed the legs and then I just went to my table saw here. And well, it's not a table saw, it's a miter saw, but I just used that to even out the top. Now I cut my pedestal down to where when I put the legs on and the tabletop on, the new coffee table will sit to be about 17 to 18 inches high, which is perfect for my um, couch height. So next what I did was just put the legs back on my pedestal and then I gave it three coats of white chalk paint. I also made sure that I painted that little disc that attaches to the underneath of the table with some white chalk paint so that way it would match um, and if you looked underneath the table you would see that white. Now moving on to the tabletop, I had my heart set on sanding down this tabletop and staining it because that's what I saw on Pinterest. I saw all these beautiful pedestal tables and the tops were stained on them and the bottoms were painted and that's what I liked. I liked that look. So I got the sander out and I started sanding and sanding and sanding and about after an hour of sanding, I didn't get far at all. The finish on this tabletop did not want to come off. So I gave up on that idea. And can you guess what I did? I painted the top. So I just took uh, my white chalk paint and I put three coats of that on top of this table. And it's not my original plan, but I still like how it turned out. So after everything was dry, I went ahead and just screwed that little disc back onto the bottom of the table. And then I'm going to attach the legs now. So to attach the legs, I just used some wood glue and I just put it in the center of that disc there. And then I just placed my table legs on top there. And when I did that, I realized that I didn't paint the bottom of my legs, so I needed to do that. To help the wood glue dry and set to the table base, I did place some weight in the middle of those legs and let this dry for 24 hours. 
Once it was all dry, I was able to pick it up and move it around perfectly. And I came back with some sandpaper and just sanded the edges of the top of the table um, just to give it more of a weathered farmhouse look. I also sanded the legs of the table and I just did the edges so that way it would look like it's kind of like a natural wear and tear and I just did it very lightly. I did the uh, pedestal as well and I think this just gives it a nice weathered farmhouse look that matches my decor. The last thing that I did was use this matte clear protective top coat uh, finish. It's by Rust-Oleum and it's for chalked paint and I just sprayed that all over and I love how this coffee table turned out. Every day I'm looking for a way to return to the town when everything was easy to learn. Don't know when it started to get so serious. For my next project, I'm going to make a wooden candlestick. And for that, I'm going to use the rest of the pillar that I cut from my table. So I'm not going to let any part of that table go to waste or be put in the trash. I just used my saw to cut the top off to even it out. And now I'm going to take this uh, chalk paint by Rusoleum. It's in the color Serenity Blue. And I sprayed, I think, three coats of spray paint on this to cover it all up. And once it was dry, I came back and used a piece of sandpaper to distress the edges of this candlestick. Um, I actually probably didn't wait long enough because I took off a little bit more than what I anticipated of the paint um, because it wasn't completely dry, but I really like how the dark red wood shows through with this blue color. I think this candlestick turned out perfect and it looks beautiful on top of my coffee table. Could it be my imagination? This last project I am going to make over this mirror and I actually found this mirror in the trash when I was on a walk with my neighbor and we were walking around the neighborhood and it was just in someone's trash out on the side so I picked it up and I took it back home and it's been sitting in my basement ever since so <laughs> I'm gonna do something with it and I thought I could antique the mirror so I watched a video on YouTube and a couple blog posts from Pinterest I read and thought, I got this, super easy, I can antique this mirror. So I took the back off and I got the mirror out and I had some adhesive remover on hand. Um, so I put some gloves on because this stuff will burn if you get it on your skin. So don't wanna do that. I put the adhesive remover on the back of the mirror to take off the coating on the back of the mirror. And it worked really well. It started to come off instantly. But this is where I went wrong. I took a plastic scraper and I scraped the back of the mirror to get that paint off. And oh my gosh, I cringe while I'm watching this because what happened when I did this is I scratched the mirror. So my whole antiquing process was foiled at this point. But I wasn't gonna give up and I wasn't gonna let this mirror go to waste or go back in the trash. So I took some chalk paint, some chalkboard paint, and I am gonna turn this into a chalkboard. I put three coats of this chalkboard paint onto the top of this mirror. And then I moved on to the frame and just painted the frame with some of that white chalk paint and let everything dry overnight. When you're painting something with chalkboard paint, um, you do want to give it overnight to dry because it does peel easily. Um, so I, that's why I waited overnight for this mirror to dry completely so that way I wouldn't scratch it. Because um, I've had projects before where I've painted it with chalkboard paint and it's come off just really easily at the touch of it. So um, you just want to wait overnight. So anyways, I 
put the mirror back together the next day and then I went ahead and distressed the edges of the frame with some sandpaper. Should have probably done that before I put the mirror back in, but that's okay. It worked out. So um, the last thing that I did is you really want to prime your uh, chalkboard when you paint with the chalkboard paint just with a regular piece of chalk just um, go over it and then erase it and then it just really primes the chalkboard so that way you can write on it easily and even though this project didn't turn out and I didn't get an antiqued mirror I still got a really cute farmhouse chalkboard and I love how it turned out every day I'm looking for a way to return to the town when everything was easy to learn don't know when it started to get so serious building up an illusion of a world full of trust thank you guys so much for watching today make sure to check out that playlist linked down below for everyone else's trash to treasures give this video a thumbs up and i'll see you guys next time take care bye bye